Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic calendar where you can use in your data model for either Power Query or Power Pivot. If we ever had instances where we want to kind of create a dynamic calendar, you can do it in Excel where you type 1, 1 in 20, let's say 2017, and you can drag this down to create a list of dates that increment. But what if we wanted to do this kind of more easily, have it dynamically created and have it dynamically adjust to our particular date. Let's see how we can do this in Power Query. Let's delete this first. We can create this dynamic calendar in Power Query, and this is uh, in Excel Office 365. I just go under Data, go to Get Data, and I'm going to get data from other sources and create a blank query. And once the Power Query window comes up, let's minimize this a little bit to make it easier to see. Once it comes up, in the field here, I am going to enter equals, I'll equal hash date. This is the literal for date. And in open parentheses, let's start off the year. We'll have our starting year or starting date to go from 2017. And it's going to be the first month and the first day. Close parentheses, press enter, and we have our little date, our literal date there. What I also need to do now is put in another formula. So click on the FX, and this is going to be the one formula that we're going to use. So this is going to be the function, or the M code function that we're going to use. It's going to be called list.date. And then we're going to call the source, which is going to be the, our starting date, 1 1 2017. So the first argument is the source. The next argument is going to be our number from. This is another DAX function, number from. And the third argument, or another sub-argument from this particular second argument is this DAX function called date time. Oops, I gotta capitalize the time. And this is gonna be local now. And so this is what, what it's gonna do, is gonna take the timestamp from your local computer in your system and put it in here and give it a number. It's going to take that number. And what I want to do is I want to minus off the date. I'm going to minus the number dot from. And this is going to take it from the source. So my source that I have here, which is this number. And what it's going to do, it's going to take the number from the serial number from the date of now minus the serial number of the source date. That is going to be the count of how many records or rows I'm going to have. And the last argument I'm going to add is the duration. So put a hash. This is a literal duration. And we're going to have this increment for, for days. So that's one day. Zero, comma, zero, comma, zero. Press enter. Whoops, we have a syntax error because I needed another parenthesis there, another closing parenthesis there. All right, and now I've got my list of dates. So I have my list of dates. Today is the 13th of December. So if I scroll all the way down, actually, let me convert this to a table and bring it into the worksheet. That'll probably be easier. I'll click OK. This is a table. I'll turn this into a date. Close and load. And you'll see that it puts it into the worksheet. And if I, if I control shift down arrow, or just control down arrow, Today is the 13th. I bring up my calendar. You can see the 13th is selected. If I change my date to something else, you'll see that if I refresh this table, it's going to go to another date. So let's try to change my date and see how this works. I click on that. So I changed my date. You can see that when I click on the calendar here, the date has changed to December. And if I refresh this table, we're going to, we're going to have some extra rows. To, to include all the dates from 1213 to 1225. Go under Data, Refresh All, and now you see that it has refreshed everything. So that list, that particular statement, the list that dates, this is how it works. We have three arguments. We had our start date, which was 1-1-2017. One, one, we had our count. This was the number. So this was the delta, the subtraction between the local date time now minus the source date. And that gives us our number of records or rows that we want to have, and our steps, our duration. 
it's the number of, of days that we want to increment by. So this is what that list.dates function, m function does. So I'm going to go back in here into the query, right click, go under edit, and now we can actually add some things to it. So I can say, I can call this a date, press enter, now that's a date column, and I can add some other columns, and it'll give me extra fields that I can work with as a calendar table. I have that selected, go to add column, and we have our from date options here. So maybe I want to add year, so I have an extra column for year, select my date again, and let's see what else can we add. Let's go, let's go to quarter, we'll add quarter for that. Select this one, and go to, after that would be month, the number of months, the number for the month, and maybe the month name. All right, we've got a month name, and now we can add uh, maybe days, and then the name of the day. We have the days, like one, the first, the second, and click on date again, and maybe we can add the name of the day. So this becomes our calendar table, which we can use in our data model for either Power Query, when we want to link it to another table, or Power Pivot. If I go to Home, click Close and Load, now you notice that it has got, entered my other columns there, and I've also got my 1225 there. And this becomes our dynamic table because as we refresh this table, uh, maybe weekly, or daily, or weekly, that end date changes based on our system time. I'm going to change my system time back to today's date. You can see today's date has been changed back to the 13th. And if I scroll down here, we have it at 1225. If I click Data Refresh All, it's going to change it back, and we have 1213 right here now. Now, one thing to also do here, and instead of having it dependent on our the day that we're on, maybe we would just want to hard code it to whatever date that we're on. We just wanted to have that calendar go all the way to the end of the year. Well, that's actually pretty easy to do. I'm going to go back into the query, right click, go under Edit, and in here, what we can say is go back to this custom step that we entered where our list dates is and where it says number from date time we can add an extra m code called date and date dot end of year open with parentheses close parentheses we'll see if that it brings up any errors no errors so go to home close and load and now you notice, if I go all the way down, it should be the last one, the last date there should be 12-31-2018, control down arrow, and then we have 12-31-2018. So irrespective of what date that we're in, we can have it set to indicate that it's going to be the last day of the year for that particular date, depending on our system. So that's another way you can do that if you, don't, if you wanted to have it for the full year. So it doesn't matter which state you're in. If you're on October 1st, 2018, or November 1st, 2018, it's always going to be, the last date will be December 31st, 2018. So that's a way that we can create a dynamic calendar that we can use either in Power Query and related to other tables, or we can do it also in, use it in Power Pivot if we want to create relationships to other tables. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.